A young man has the power to heal the dying just by laying his hands on them. Over the years, he has cured dozens of cancers, brain damage, and spinal injuries, but now whoever he touches dies soon after. Is he a fraud, or has his miracle-making for money finally brought on the wrath of God? Who is this guy, and how does he do what he does? Let's see if we can put our hands on the truth. A fiery car crash occurs in Kenwood, Tennessee in 1983. As a man who died is being carried away, a preacher, Calvin Hartley, and his adopted son, Samuel, approach the body bag and unzip it. Samuel chants, I want you to rise, rise up and heal. He takes the corpse's hand and says, accept the miracle you are given. Soon, the crisp burnt hand squeezes the child's. Ten years later, Scully shows Mulder a video of this preacher and his son at a healing sermon. She explains that the woman on the table has a malignant brain tumor, but Samuel will attempt to lay hands and heal her. Mulder has heard of these people. Apparently, they have been healing people at such religious gatherings for ten years. Scully resumes the tape and says local authorities have been trying to shut them down, first for fraud, but now for murder. It seems the woman to be healed died a few hours later of unknown causes. The FBI has asked Scully with her medical background to assist in the investigation. So off they go to the heart of the Bible Belt, Kenwood, Tennessee. Upon arrival, they buy tickets to the Miracle Ministry Sermon. Hartley welcomes all those who traveled far to be healed, but says Samuel cannot join them, but will be back in two days. Mulder jokes, saying he'll stick around to see if they can bring back Elvis. The two approach Hartley, who tells them that Samuel is missing. As he and a mysterious man in black named Vance drive off, Sheriff Daniels comes to speak with the agents. He gives Scully the coroner's documents and says he doesn't believe in these soapbox healing ceremonies and seems annoyed that the preacher has become a millionaire since the boy joined the team. Scully is surprised that no autopsies were performed on the three people who died recently when Samuel tried to heal them. Daniel says the religious fanatics have blocked any attempts to investigate the deaths. Later that night, they go to exhume the bodies, but a large group from the ministry, led by Vance, the original Burning Man who started this, arrives to stop them. Vance says that they answer to a higher power than the FBI and will do everything possible to stop them from defiling the corpses. Just then, they get a call that Samuel's car has been spotted near a bar in town. Once there, they learn a drunken Samuel started a bar fight, which he lost. Daniels tells him he's under arrest on suspicion of murder. The preacher boy asks to finish his beer first, so Mulder goes to speak with him. Samuel says he's looking for penance. He thinks God is smiting him because he got too proud. Now, his healing powers cause harm, even death. He pretty much confesses to the murder because he thinks he's cursed. He asks Scully if she doubts his gift and the power of God. He then goes on to say he can see deep pain within Mulder, a pain caused by the loss of his sister when he was a child. Mulder wants to hear more, and Samuel says that his sister was taken away by strangers in a bright light. That is exactly how Mulder's sister disappeared. Mulder is now sold on this guy's special talents. At the arraignment the next day, his lawyer says they have no evidence, so Samuel should be released. However, Samuel says they need to keep him, so no more harm comes to people. Even the prosecutor says he should be released on bail. Suddenly, a plague of locusts, or grasshoppers, fills the courtroom. Thousands of them are flying everywhere, just like a biblical prophecy. Samuel stands on the chair as everyone is exiting the courtroom. He is proclaiming that this is proof he is guilty in the eyes of God. 
Later, as Scully is examining the grasshoppers, Mulder quotes from a Bible passage on how God brought the locusts to the sinners. Scully says, A few grasshoppers on a plague. It's farm country, and swarms of insects are common. Mulder says, Yeah, but not in a courtroom. Though some lawyers may be bloodsuckers, but still, they're not insects. He goes on to show Scully records for all the people healed by Samuel. There are dozens of cases of spontaneous cancer remission, even regenerated nerve tissue in paraplegics. None can be explained by conventional medicine. Mulder thinks the kid is for real. He says Western medicine focuses on biochemistry, but the body also runs on an electromagnetic system. Maybe his hands can affect an ill person's energy. Vance comes to the door requesting them to meet with Hartley. At the meeting, he asks for their help. He says his son has incredible power to feel what others do. Hartley thinks some people may be sabotaging his healing ceremonies. He blames people like Daniels who fear the unknown. He gives the example of Daniel's wife who suffers from debilitating arthritis and he knows Samuel could heal her. However, the sheriff refuses to believe it. Scully asks, can you blame him? Hartley invites them to witness a healing ceremony firsthand that afternoon. Suddenly, Mother sees his sister outside the window. He runs out of the meeting, but no one else saw her. He notices Samuel gazing at him in an omniscient way from his window. People are gathering at the Miracle Ministry, and Vance greets them. A family has come to have their daughter, Margaret, cured of her multiple sclerosis. Vance promises them a front row seat. Meanwhile, Hartley begs his son to perform his miracles. Samuel is reluctant and afraid, but even Vance tells him he must share his gifts for the good of mankind. Mulder and Scully arrive. The sermon begins with the example of Vance's miracle. He takes the microphone and introduces Samuel. Again, Mulder sees his sister and takes off after her through the crowd. Samuel goes about touching many people, including Margaret. He stops with her and asks her to pray with him. Just then, she goes into convulsions. Scully comes to her aid, but within seconds, she is confirmed dead. At the morgue, Vance tries to get a crowd riled up to prevent an autopsy. Scully speaks with the parents and tells them the seizure may have been due to foul play. Margaret's father speaks with his wife. Soon, her parents give permission for them to find the cause of death. Scully begins the autopsy. She notices damage to the mucous membranes and lungs. Her cause of death is cellular hypoxia, which was the result of ingesting a poison like cyanide or arsenic. When the toxicology report comes back, they'll know. Mulder visits Samuel in jail. He says he's asking Sheriff Daniels to release him. He admits to Mulder he was not the one who poisoned the girl, but still feels responsible for her death. He still believes the Lord has testified against him, but Mulder says the law will find him innocent. Again, Mulder asks about his sister. Samuel will not admit or deny he sent those visions to him because he feels the devil is watching him now. When Daniels shows up, Mulder tells him he should be looking for the real murderer. Later, the jailer unlocks the door to let some thugs into Samuel's cell, and they beat him. The next morning, a deputy visits Daniels to report the preacher boy has been killed. He says it was some rowdy drunks who spent the night in the same cell. Scully comments that he was alone in his cell, but the sheriff says some DUI arrests joined him. It happens it was the same ones from the bar brawl the other night. Hartley is devastated and says the boy was blessed, never harming a soul. He is genuinely grief-stricken over the loss of his son. The agents go back into the courthouse and discover a potato piece on the floor. They go to the roof and find more potatoes leading to the ventilation ducts. It looks like someone bought cases of these insects from a supplier and then dumped them in there. Yes, there are insect farms, and lots of people eat them. 
Now, they need to trace back the purchase of the bag of bugs. Late at night, Vance awakens to find Samuel in his room. He's startled, saying he should be dead. Yeah, but this guy brings things back to life, so why not a selfie? Samuel asks why Vance betrayed him, saying he knows he was the one who murdered those people and wants to know why after he gave him a second chance at life. Vance shows his scarred hands and face and says, Is this what you call life? Daniels, Mulder, and Scully awaken Hartley, bringing the evidence that Vance is the culprit. They go up to his bedroom and find him shivering and see that he has just ingested cyanide. Vance says he thought Samuel was a wolf in sheep's clothing by not letting him die. But now he knows he was the real thing and a good soul. With his last dying breath, Vance says Samuel came to forgive him for all the evil he had done. With the case closed, Mulder and Scully are preparing to leave when they get a call from Daniels. It seems Samuel's body is missing from the morgue. At the investigation, a nurse says she witnessed Samuel walking away on his own down the hospital corridor. Daniel says she's talking crazy, but the nurse says many other people saw him walk away as well. The sheriff is now questioning his own belief in miracles. He returns home and finds his wife reading the headlines of how Samuel rose from the dead. She asks how this can happen if the boy was an awful fake, like he said. She cries and states if Samuel was real, he could have healed her when he offered to. The deputy comes to the door and says the district attorney needs to question him about the suspicious death of Samuel while in his custody. Ugh, the sheriff had him killed. Really? Mulder and Scully watch the miracle ministry packing up. He comments how the death of his son probably strengthened Hartley's faith. After all, someone rising from the dead only happens every 2,000 years or so. Okay, so what are your thoughts on this one? I kind of felt bad for Samuel myself. But we want to know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on the next video or the playlist below. Thanks for watching.